lovelies hello family this is Kimberly purpose and welcome to my channel today um, I wanted us to do a, another topic about the American Aboriginals and this time we're going to talk about um, pretty much the origins of shamanism because I want to get some more information I've been doing some research and also we're going to talk about Monique Monique uh, that's a form of shamanism or uh, um, energy healing that is done by the indigenous people of South America. So we're going to touch on that because I want to um, explain, you know, show that there is a somewhat a correlation between um, the aboriginals and the um, the natives, you know, um, yeah, but anyway, but before we start, we're going to talk about that, but before we start, I want to share my, once again, my website, my, to my business, is called Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center, and it's um, therapy, feel like you're falling apart, let us help you find the missing pieces in your life. Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center, PCWC, provides a variety of therapeutic counseling services geared towards helping individuals, families, and the communities. Our goal is to assist individuals holistically through our transpersonal counseling psychological services. This is the website, you guys, and this is me on Psychology Today. Um, and we provide a sliding scale um, services and also uh, we provide telehealth as well and uh, we provide services over the phone and also via the internet so give us a call today so let's continue you guys we're going to go back to this particular article it's called the origins of shamanism and it was published in Gaia and the Gaia staff and everything so I think this was published on September the 3rd uh, 2019 um, it doesn't have the author's name on this particular article but I was just sort of interested and fascinating because uh, shamanism has been coming up a lot and and I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. I just I'm gonna put a link to this article for you guys to check it out yourselves. It's called "The Origins in History of No." It says "The Origins of Shamanism," and it touches on the history of shamanism. Um, I sort of did an overview of this article. I didn't really read it in depth. But I'm gonna read it, some of it with you all because it's lengthy, and I wanted to also touch on some other articles as well besides this one and let's see uh this one the other article this one's pretty much going giving you an overview about shamanism and the other article sort of tells you a little bit more about uh, the background between where shamanism come from the term shamanism come from but this article when I read it, it touches mostly on the shamanism, um, dealing with the cultures, um, the Indian, from Indian, Native American, South American shamans, and uh, the Siberians. Um, pretty much it focused mostly on the Mongoloid Indians, but um, we're going to get to that. It says here, shamanism, uh, shamanism originates in Siberia, while members of the indigenous tribes would gather sometimes poisonous and highly psychoactive mushrooms. Amen, Amanita muscara, once it was recognized and classified as shamanism, it became apparent that many cultures around the world conducted similar practices. And yes, it does. And this article, I feel like it's a little, it's very biased in a way because uh, they put most of the emphasis on only the Mongoloids primarily. Um, shamanism is not just something that was done by the Mongoloids. It was also done by other cultures globally. And some of these cultures that um, practice shamanism 
um, even goes even further back. Uh, prior to the Mongoloids coming here into the Americas, you know, um, they, the, the Aborigines of Australia also have some form of shamanism as well. And it was definitely excluded, which I feel like was very unfortunate because uh, the Australian is one of uh, Australian noise and also the Africans of Africa have an even longer history an older, more ancient civilization than the Mongoloids. And so um, there's a lot of biasness because they want to pin the Mongoloids and Europeans as being ancients when actuality, uh, most of the stuff that they are doing and practicing came from the original people, which are the um, Aboriginals and the, and the Africans, pretty much. But this article sort of, um, Oh no! The way they write it, it just overlooks that fact, and um, that's where the um, biasness come from. You know, if you're going to, you know, talk about shamanism and everything, you need to be more inclusive of all the cultures. You know, he says globally right here, but yet you act like Siberia is the only place that um actually practice it when it's also seen globally if it's glo globally you need to mention all points of the earth besides this one location and like i said i believe it's because they want to um they don't want to acknowledge what the original people have done they want to put more focus on the mongoloids and in that way they can sort of try to slide themselves in as you caucasians as being um, indigenous when they're not but right here it says shamanistic mysticism it might just be the oldest spiritual practice in the world one that is not necessarily based on faith in god but rather based on animism animism the belief that everything is living and has a spirit that is also found within the Australian noise as well. And you see that also in Africa as well. So it's not just um, in this particular region, you know, it's not just the Mongols that practice it. The American Aboriginals as well, that's also practice it as well. Um, because we are actually the Aboriginals that were found those bones that they found in the Brazil were actually, you know, the same people that are us that shows that we were already over here. And so that's another reason why they skate over that fact. It says here, so what is shamanism? Shamanism without the keys exists alone. The shamanistic rituals are practiced and it continues to exist. Shamanism are linked to our plane and higher planes of existence. They link to the spirit world in order to heal contact the um, deceased ancestors influence the weather and uplift the consciousness and this is also found with a lot of the um, African um, traditions as well as well as the American Aboriginals you see this with voodoo and hoodoo which is also included of and that's why I I sort of had you know the way they describe and try to not be inclusive of it or just to scave over and ignore the fact that hoodoo and voodoo does the same thing <laughs> and it's a much older uh, practice especially voodoo um more ancient than the shamans so actually more than likely the shamans got you know <laughs> you, you can't say pin a certain group as being the original when they weren't here first especially here in the americas so but i don't know if you all again want to get my dress but i think that's why they sort of leave out certain cultures in these articles and in a lot of these writings is because they want to put more of the focus on a certain group um, to continue the narrative of erasure of the in, true indigenous people who were already here first and as a way to ensure that they are not included in a lot of these writings. 
And as long as you continue to exclude the original people from the writings, these information will never be completely accurate or truthful. Shamanism also, I wanted to show in this other article. Let me see if I can get to it. Um, it's right here in this article. I believe this is it. Right here. Um, which I appreciate this particular author. This author was more accurate in explaining themselves about shaman. And they explained that shaman is just a term, the word that came from Siberia and where the origin, where the Mongoloids originate from. And really they, you know, that's where they're from. They're not really from here, from the Americas. Uh, they are actually the second wave of people that came here. The Mongoloids are the Clover pe Clovis people. They're the second wave. The original people are the Paleo Indians, which were us which are the American Aborigines, the Australianoids that came over here. And we are the dark skinned people with the woven hair that was here and that are found in the artwork um, prior to, and the people that they found as in the artwork that dates around the 1500s. You don't see the Mongols in them. Mongols, and they found later, I guess came over later and, and put them in and i don't know why but some kind of way they have it where it's them and also the mixed race people as being the original when you can't be the original the original people are the dark-skinned people that were here and it's been proven through dna that the original people are the darker skinned people so we are the copper color people that were here copper color race one of the copper color races it wasn't just the Mongols, the Aboriginals were here as well. And we were first, we we're the Paleo Indians. And I try to give clarity on this, um, especially with these articles, because um, so Gaia, you know, they try to be, they one of the leading sources talking about some of these things dealing with um, ancient history and metaphysics and everything. Well, I know it's a lot, there's a lot of biasness too. In a lot of their writings and reportings, they um, totally overlooked the original people and only put Mongols and themselves uh, as being uh, um, and as being the experts in, um, I guess, the experts in the field of the ancient indigenous people, especially when it comes to spirituality and also. Um, anthropology and that's why i said more of us need to be in this field we need to more of us need to be writing our own story um, as historians as anthropologists as archaeologists as meta metaphysics as well you know um because it's sort of all metaphysics also sort of ties into this as well and understanding um our culture and our history so um uh, our identity can also be restored because a lot of these languages have been destroyed through the colonization and and um, destruction of records globally. And that's why, um, especially here in the Americas, a lot of stuff is gone. And I see and that's, we keep on practicing other religions and well, I say, other forms of spirituality we don't even connect with the earth because you know dealing with christianity most of us are still most of us the aboriginals are christians they turn their backs to the indigenous way of their people you know part of it's because the loss of identity and having culture and also the erasure of the identity and history books and not knowing who they really are and that's why we need to, all this knowledge is coming to us. We need to be reading up on it and reconnecting to all of these things our indigenous people are doing. And the question is, why are they so interested in what our ancestors did? And why is it that they're trying to all of a sudden put themselves as being indigenous and why they're trying to learn the ways of our people? You know, um, Chief, uh, what's her name? Uh, Chief Warhorse. 
That's, I like to quote her a lot. She talks about how they, back in the day, they used to learn our ways and follow us and, and trying to learn the things that we do in our language. And um, she was Chata. And they used it so they could take it for themselves and then throw us off the tribes and put themselves as being indigenous. And they did it through paper genocide, pretty much. But in this particular article, let me get back, you know, I can go on and on. And this term shaman comes from um, this author. Um, this comes from cultural cultural survival. And I like this article because it goes, it's more, it touches more on the more ancient people. Um, and he tells the truth about where the word shamanism come from. But the uh, article with the Gaia, they make it seem like shaman is the original word for this particular culture and practice. And it's not. And this author sort of acknowledges the fact that it's an ancient, that this actually go past what the term of shamanism that was used by the people of Siberia. It's a much older way of living and a much older form of, of spirituality and energy healing that goes even further back in time with uh, the original people as well. And it's, and it's global. And the reason why it's global is because, you know, the original people was global. And then it was spread it out to others, including the some people from Siberia, the Mongoloids. And it says here in this issue of Culture Survival Quarterly, readers are introduced to a extraordinary uh, category of people who have come to be known as shamans. Those worldwide men and women chose by the spirits to meditate between the humans and the spiritual dimensions. In collection of paper from numerous settings assembled by the anthropologist Michael Winkleman, the shamanism universe, universal features became apparent, including the characteristics of a school elusive practitioner who had the power to negotiate life and doubt in some communities. And then he continues to say that the term shaman comes from the even king um, reindeer herders of Siberia. But cross-cultural studies have shown remarkable similarities in the terms of shamanic experiences and religious practices in hunter-gatherer societies across the globe. And that's one thing we got to remember it wasn't based in Siberia, but a lot of people look at this name and see that it came from Siberia and they assume that the Mongoloids came up with all of this and they really didn't. Or they're trying to make it some kind of way where Europeans had everything to do with it and 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 then and, and totally ignored the original people who had a lot to say do with it, who were also here and who was the first. And like I said, if you're going to write it, you need to write it right and include the, you know, all people that were. And that will help erase this uh, false narrative that's constantly going on today that only the Mongols, you know, or Caucasians or something, you know, trying to keep this myth going that they created all these uh, spirituality forms of healing when it was already here by the originals. And they learn from the originals pretty much. And they still are. And but when you look it up on the internet, that's all you see is Caucasian faces on there. Caucasians or either Mongoloids or the Midsbreeds. But he says, but not the original people that look like men who are darker, with woven hair. And it says with Negro features, in other words. As a young um Ethnographer in the early 1980s, I sought out the shamans in Australian Australia's are back. I wondered if the elders described the anthropologist A.P. Elkins' classic text. Aboriginal men of high degree could describe a shaman. Were such people still fluent in Aboriginal today? And then he goes on and talks about his experiences with the Aborigines as shamans. And seeing this is why I appreciate with this author, he acknowledged the fact that they were shamans. Um, and if the Australians were already here in the Americas and they had new world features, they look a lot, you know, and they blacks were already over here, then <laughs> it made sense that it came from them. 
and that the Mangala is actually probably more than likely learned a lot of this stuff from the aboriginals that were already here. That's all I'm saying. But I'm going to put a link to this author article because this is a lengthy article and it's a wonderful article detailing the aboriginals and their shamanic practices. And to me, I feel like there's a strong connection to also with the um, the um, aboriginals here in the Americas because hoodoo and Kudu sort of touches on some of the healings, the roots. They haven't even mentioned um, root doctors as well. And that's why I was saying, if y'all you, you may want to check out my other video that I've done um, about hoodoo, you know, and how um, he, the people are trying to strip hoodoo from the African-Americans here in the United States. And how a lot of us are scared to practice it because we think it's evil when actuality is not. A lot of the stuff that was added to it, the conjuring, comes from the Caucasians. You know, the, um, that and witchcraft and stuff comes from Europe, Europe from the paganistic um, religions that they created. And it not, has nothing to do with us. But if you take that out and look at the, the actual stuff that our people have done, you know, because my grandfather was a root doctor. Um, my grandmother told me that he used to practice medicine. He's like the medicine man, you know. I'm going to do another video about doing a comparison between uh, root doctors and the medicine man because pretty much they're one and the same. They do a lot of the same things. It's just for some reason the Caucasians want to make it similar to witchcraft or nationality. I think, too, is to try to keep us and steer us away from it to, and put fear in our heart of connecting of who we are but that is very important that we actually do connect but i also want to go back and talk about the moon and key i don't know if you all heard of the moon and key the moon and key is another spiritual healing process uh, practice um, that's done by the ancients uh, and I was very fascinated. I'm taking some classes right now and doing my own research and learning more about the Mooney Key Nine Rites um, of Initiation, about um, how to become a person of wisdom and power. And I think it's really beautiful, you guys. And it's something that we as American Aboriginals should be tapping into. It was practiced by the ancient people of South America. And like I said, they found or uh, had to reunite um, uh, Aboriginal bones down there in the Brazils. There's artwork paintings of people that look just like us with dark skin and woven hair because we were already over here with locks. And we were here. We've been here the whole time. And they even wear braids and have all the features and Negro features, you know, they're here. But we tend to look at these mixed people right here that's been, or mongoloids, and some of these folks, they did DNA tests. I did another video on that, that shows that they are, are an admixture of Aboriginal and mongoloid. And some of them, you know, mostly Aboriginal and mongoloid, and they still look like that. And they come out looking like that. They have a mixture of the Negro features along with the Mongolo features. And that's what we're seeing, the blending of the two races um, that took place perhaps thousands of years ago when the Mongoloids came over, the Clovis people. They are the second wave. We are the first wave. We were already over here. We are the original. And that's what you get. And this is what he is. I'm assuming that's what he looks like to me in this picture, the mixture of the Clovis, the um, Paleo Indians, and the Clovis people. In other words, the Mongoloids and the Aboriginals, and this is what they look like, and um, and that's what they got. And of course, you're gonna have the triracial picture, which are the Mexicans. Mexicans are a triracial group of people. They're mixed with the Mongoloids, the um, Amer American Aborigines, and Europeans. And that's what you get. And at Mr. People, we get confused. And that's why we think, oh, all the original people. No. If you look at the, the artwork, 
and everything and look at things more clearly you know they were more negro they got um, negro future indians and they find the remains of people with negro features you know obviously we were already over here but anyway and, the, and if we were already over here, then that means that this history that they're talking about is our history. And this spirituality they're talking about is something that we need to be delving into and kind of uh, reconnecting to. And a lot of times we run away from it. It's because um, we don't realize that this is what we should be practicing. And I'm pretty sure that some of us deep rooted inside of us know that this is something that we should be doing. And that's why I'm doing it. I'm practicing and I've been feeling a more of a spiritual connection and everything. But let's read what this says. It says here, I'm gonna put a link to this article. This article was um, called The Four Winds. And it was published in um, July 26, 2016. It says, what is Muna King? It says, the prophecies of the ancient America speak about a period of great transformation and foretells a new human appearing on the planet. Persons of wisdom and power who lives with three of fear and abide in their eternal nature, accepting stewardships for all creation. Based on, move me out the way. <laughs> It says here, based on the practices of shamans and of the Andes and the Amazons, the Muna King are nine rites of initiations to become a person of wisdom and power. They are energetic transmissions that heal the wounds of the past, the genetic and karmatic inheritance we are both born with. They transform and upgrade the luminous energy fields and reinform our. Uh, DNA enabling us to grow a new body that ages, heals, and dies differently. And like I said, I feel like this is a wonderful type of spirituality of transforming ourselves and healing from our past, past hurts and past pains that we've been through. You know, because we have been through a lot in this country. And the fact that we have lost our connection of who we are, it affects us. And it's deep down, not just physically, but also mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It even hits to the core of our DNA with memories. I talk about that as well. How um, we have wounds that are really deep that needs to be you know, healed and that it um, affects us to the core and how you can actually affect you and that these memories are passed out for generation and generations through dna and i believe more and more research is finding that to be true and it's, it's still at its big emphasis stages but some there is some signs that it could be some truth in it you know and and like i said the moon key a ways to see her within you the ability to see into the invisible world of energy and spirit. The second awaken, the healer within you, also launches your personal healing journey. The third consists of energetic protection that enables you to walk fearlessly with the beauty in the world. The fourth connection, your you to a lineage of healers, wisdom keepers, and earth keepers from the past and the future. We will work with you and through you. And then it says here, these rites were given to the ancient teachers by angelic beings and are passed on from teacher to student in the forms of seeds. These seeds are gifted to you by another. It is up to you to grow them into fruit bearing trees. The traditional fire ceremony, sometimes in the form of plain white candles, is used to grow your rice. Once you see, as you receive the gift, these rites, you sense the presence of the lineage with you, the luminous ones who work for the spirit world. And this is really deep, you guys, really deep. And then, like I said, it goes back to what I said before, we're more than what we think we are. I mean, we can do, we're more than, than what Christianity or whatever it is. You know, we're more than just the physical. There's more to us than we, than what meets the eye. And that's why it's important to learn and tap from within, it's from within and out. And now you gotta tap into the universe and then all the energy that you 
have goes out into the universe and you make a, a you can make more of an impact and a difference in this world when you're more connected but i can go on and on with this i just thought this was um, another fascinating article uh, i not quite familiar with um, when i came but i'm learning i'm taking a class too and so um i think once i take the class and go through the training and everything and practice more into it i'll um, probably do another updated video but i'm gonna share my journey of this in my other youtube video on the purpose tv um i that's what i want to do it's a holistic healing channel um i would like for you all to um connect with me there. I'm going to have that channel too. I got another Psychology Essence channel as well. And a Purpose Vlog. I'm going to start putting some video video logs on there. Um, learning more about me. <laughs> now that's that's just a video about uh, me and life in general. You know, the behind the scenes pretty much. So all these videos that I do. But um, yeah. I would like to hear what you all think and um, like this video and thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And um, till next time, family, love and peace. Bye bye. Oh, and don't forget to share the video and get the word of us. You know, it's time for us to come together and connect with Mother Earth. Bye bye.